1914, so at the start of the First World War, there was no Royal Air Force as we see it now as a separate service. There was what was called the Royal Flying Corps, which was an element of the Army, and the Royal Naval Air Service, which was an, an element of the Navy. What we saw the Air Forces then is, was very experimental. It was very new as well, an aircraft was a new thing. At the start of the 20th century, aeroplanes were very different from today. They had rickety structures and they couldn't carry very much, travel very fast or cover long distances. They were limited by the size of the engine they could use and the power that it could give out. So, but they didn't have the lightweight alloys and the lightweight metals you have today. So they had to use wood. They had to use stretched canvas over this wood to create a wing form platform. And this was stressed by wires and ties to make a sturdy product. The First World War on the Western Front was mainly characterised by trench warfare. This resulted in a huge loss of life and many injuries, but with little advancement. Initially, the war had been a race to the sea up at the Belgium coastline. They realised then that the war was going to go static. We couldn't outflank, we couldn't get around each other. So they started to, to dig down into trenches. That obviously hid enemy forces from each other because we were below ground. Both sides were keen to use technology to break the deadlock and advance on the battlefield. Aircraft were part of that development. This is where then the Royal Flying Corps, the Royal Naval Air Service and the air power, the aircraft were used basically to their advantage. They could get up above the woods, they could get up over hills. They could fly above the trenches and look down and see what the enemy was doing. The use of reconnaissance from the air provided invaluable information on what the other side was doing and planning. The pilots needed a lot of skill, and the job was dangerous. It is one pilot in a very um, small aircraft. Didn't have much height, so we couldn't get very high, so he was restricted by cloud cover, weather conditions over the lines and over the trenches. So we'd have to fly and plot his route to miss the clouds out, get low enough to look down. In the early stages, there was no cameras. He was flying, looking down, putting it to memory what he's seeing, coming back, landing, and then transferring that to a map, and then being debriefed on what he saw. As the war dragged on, air reconnaissance and its technology developed. It became an important communication tool during a battle as well as before. The engines got bigger, the aircraft got bigger and sturdier, so we could put an observer on them. If we can carry a little bit more weight, we can put a camera onto the side of it to take photographs, because that's better than the pilot's memory. Immediately, we're seeing the benefits of that aircraft turning this battle space into a three-dimensional warfare. All the armies were using aeroplanes, and pilots from opposing sides would see each other in the sky. Over time, the air became another arena in which to fight. What initially started off as um, two gentlemen in two different aircraft from opposing sizes saluting each other and waving at each other went to, actually, I'm going to carry a pistol because I want to stop him carrying out reconnaissance and scouting missions over our own lines. So it went to shooting with pistols with each other. The Germans then took the massive leap forward with the Eindecker because they managed to synchronise a machine gun on the front of the aircraft that was able to fire through the prop. And that not only meant that you didn't have to point a pistol, you aimed the aircraft. 
and it was a tit for tat as we tried to outflank each other by coming up with the latest inventions and progressing further to make our aircraft better than the enemy's aircraft to the stage at the end of the war is what you ended up with aircraft that could fight each other in aerial combat, try and out manoeuvre, and then you ended up with the forerunners of the bombers that could actually carry bombs and drop bombs tactically. The changing role of aircraft meant that the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service grew as the war went on. It did take a time initially, but by 1916, 1917, 1918, we had developed the technology, we'd found the utility of the aircraft, and we were using that airframe, that aircraft that they developed at the time, to the best of the capabilities. And as the war developed, we realised that there was a requirement to have a single service, and that became the Royal Air Force on the 1st of April 1918. The newly formed Royal Air Force pushed aircraft technology forward, ensuring that air power played a pivotal role in all future military operations.